Welcome back everybody. After the somewhat technical proof in the last video, in this video we will illustrate the method using an example. We will use proposals which are uniformly distributed on the interval from minus 1 to plus 1. And we will use an acceptance probability which is given by 1 minus x squared. So let me do a sketch. The proposals are in the interval from minus 1 to plus 1. And then p of x is the semicircle. Now what do we get? I want to run you through what the rejection sampling algorithm from the previous video gives in this case. To understand this first we need to write the density of the proposal distribution. We said it was uniform in the interval from minus 1 to 1. So the density is constant inside this interval and it must be so that it integrates to 1. So the constant we need is 1 half because if I integrate the function 1 half over an interval of length 2, then the integral equals the area under this curve, so rectangle 2 times 1 half, so the area is 1. Good, so we have g and p. The next ingredient we need is f, and we said f of x is 1 over z p of x g of x, so that is 1 over z times square root 1 minus x squared, and g we said is one half in the interval. And technically we should say this is zero for x not in the interval because there instead of one half g of x equals zero and we have not even specified what the acceptance probability outside the interval is and we don't need to because all the samples will be inside the interval. So that's what we need to work out and for this we still need the constant z that is integral p of x t of x dx and again we need to integrate this only from minus 1 to plus 1 because outside the interval g of x equals 0 and the integrand doesn't contribute. So let's plug that in. That's integral minus 1 plus 1 square root 1 minus x squared times 1 half dx. Good. To solve this integral, what one could do is one could remember from analysis rules about integrating square root of 1 minus x squared. There's the substitution rule, and if I remember right, the arc tan can be used. But instead, we can just remember the integral gives the area under a curve, and here the curve nearly is a semicircle, so we should be able to work that out just by knowing the area of a semicircle. So that is 1 half integral minus 1 to plus 1 square root 1 minus x squared dx and square root 1 minus x dx equals this curve. I flattened this a bit in the picture, picture accidentally but here is 1 so that's a proper semicircle so we need this area and the area of a circle is pi r squared so since it's a semicircle we have 1 half pi times radius is 1 squared so we get pi over 2. So in this case, the simple geometric argument tells us what to do, and that we see from that equals 1 half times pi over 2, which equals pi over 4. And with this, we are done. Namely, from this we know accepted samples have density f of x, which is 1 over z, so that's 4 over pi, times square root 1 minus x squared times 1 half, if x is in minus 1 to plus 1, 0 otherwise. And you see we can cancel this 1 half with the 4. So if I take that out, I really get 2 over pi square root 1 minus x squared here. Fine. So that's what we get if we do the rejection sampling algorithm. And that probability distribution has a name that is called Wigner's semicircle distribution, named after the physicist Wigner. Good. So let's see how we can do that in R. So there are only a few steps to perform and we can copy some of the code from our previous experiment. So this time what we do is the proposals are now uniformly distributed and different from previously. This time we need to say what is the minimum and maximum value because the minimum is not at zero. So we say minus one to one. And the other thing we need to adjust is the acceptance probability, namely that is square root 1 minus the x value squared. And I believe if we run this code, we should already get the semicircle distribution. Let us try that. So here it said it took 
12,000 proposals to generate 10,000 samples. And let's generate a histogram that looks vaguely like a semicircle. And our claim is that this is a sample from the density F. So let's plot F. Again, we need to decide on a range. And here the range is clear. We should do that from minus 1 to 1. Then F of X is 1 over Z. Now we need to remember Z was pi over 4. So 1 over Z is 4 over pi times P of X. So that is square root 1 minus X squared times the proposal density. And we said this is 1 half. So that should be f of x. And then I plot x against f of x as an additional line in this plot. Let's try a red line with line with two pixels. That did not work. So what has gone wrong? Ah, that did not work, but I see the mistake. Sequence can take either a step size or a number of steps. And the third argument, if you don't use names, is the step size. And if we go from minus one to one in steps of size 100, we will not get anywhere. Whereas if we use a length of 100 steps, we will be good. So that is the resulting plot. And you see, that looks indeed like a semicircle and we can't see the scale, but it will be slightly squashed. Let me redo the plot with aspect ratio 1. Now both axes use the same scale and you see it's like a semicircle but because of the 1 over z and the 1 half it is squashed down a bit vertically. Now there is one more thing we can verify, namely the proposition stated in part b that each sample has acceptance probability z and z we said was pi over 4. And that the mean number of proposals required to generate one output was 1 over z, so that is 4 over pi. That would be 1.27 proposals per output. If we look up here, that fits quite well, namely for 10,000 outputs we used 12,800 proposals. In our case the ratio is 1.28. And there is some random fluctuation, the theoretical rate is 1.27, so that matches. So from this we see these methods will be efficient if z is large, and it's a probability, so the largest it could be is 1. So these methods will be efficient if z is close to 1, and 0.78, that is not too bad, that is relatively close to 1. So here basically we are wasting one sample out of five. And there are other cases where you could still think of applying this method where z is much smaller. And in this case, it gets slower because you need more and more proposals to generate your samples. Okay, but here we are good. And that completes this example. So, in the last three videos, we have studied the question, what happens if you generate samples and then randomly reject a fraction of these samples? And the answer is given in this proposition we have proved. And we have illustrated the answer in the example. But the downside is of the results we have obtained so far that we can't choose which distribution we get. So in the end, that is going to be a method for random number generation. So we really would like to choose the density f of the accepted samples. Whereas what we have done so far, we chose the density of proposals and we chose the acceptance probability p and then we learned how to compute f from these two quantities. And the next step is kind of obvious. Next we will turn this process around and we will start with an f, the distribution we want, and a g, which is a distribution we can still choose, but a distribution where we already know how to generate random samples. And then we will solve the whole thing for p and ask which p do we need to generate the samples f which we require. And the resulting method, which we'll discuss in the next set of videos, is called the envelope rejection method. But for now, with the basic method, we are done, and see you in the next video. Goodbye.